Welcome back to Combat Mission Battle for Normandy for the eighth mission of the Scottish Corridor campaign. We're still with the second Argyll and Southern Highlanders, who in the last two missions have not only made it across the Odon, but have repelled a German probing attack overnight. This has not only allowed 2nd ASH to get some resupply and reinforcement, which it badly needed, but has gained them the space to go on the offensive in the morning of the 29th. They've expanded the bridgehead to the west, pushing out from Termaville and seizing the village of Gavras and another bridge over the Odon. It's not until the afternoon that the Germans get their act together and throw on a counterattack. In this mission, we're going to be defending against that counterattack from B Company's position on the south side of the village. The terrain here is much more enclosed than what we've been fighting through up to this point. It's a lot more like the stereotypical Normandy Bacard with lots of tall hedgerows and short sight lines, plenty of orchards and small fields. The ground slopes down from the top of the map, so there is a reverse slope to play with, and the left map edge corresponds to the edge of the village. It's not clear who this is going to favour. The Scots may be able to get the most out of their limited organic firepower at close range, especially when they're not the ones advancing the contact, but the Germans, according to the briefing, a company from the 10th SS Frunsberg Division, are likely to be bringing more automatic weapons and an extreme level of motivation to the fight. To make it interesting, I have quite a few objectives here. Firstly, I need to occupy Objective Gerion, or 11 Platoons Field, so that needs to be completely free from enemy forces at the end of the battle to score 100 victory points. The Germans, meanwhile, will be getting points for touching a number of phase lines, blue, yellow and red. Essentially, the further into the defence they penetrate, the more of an effect they'll have on decision making at Battalion HQ, so the further away I can keep them, the better. There are also 200 points on the table for destroying enemy forces, 100 for the enemy in general, and 100 for destroying an armoured car. Finally, the battalion support company has set up a 6 pounder anti-tank gun to the north, Brand's gun, and that needs to be pulled out and exited off the map to the south. There aren't any points specified, but seeing as though I haven't actually managed to complete an exit objective in this campaign so far, I feel like I should give it a good go. There's another 100 points on offer for the standard by this point, keeping my casualties under 20%. To get the job done, I've got infantry. B Company's 11 platoon is starting out on the map, down in Objective Gerion, and of course Brand's 6 pounder is further up the slope with a pair of scouts from 3 section. After 10 minutes, 12 platoon should arrive, and after 20, C Company's 14 platoon should turn up as well. So this is going to be an infantry fight. I have no armour support, no artillery support, not even the battalion mortars. This, and the geometry of the Bacage, is going to railroad my planning. Although the Bacage lines offer cover and concealment, they are generally pretty good fighting positions, they are very linear and vulnerable to enfilade fire. So I really want to take advantage of that. I especially want to enfilade the diagonal of phase line blue from my right, and I want to enfilade the front of Gerion from my left. That way I can engage, with hopefully disproportionate effect, enemy troops who reach those hedgerows or cross the fields. The problem with that is it means I really have to split my force up. I'm just going to have 11 platoon for the first 10 minutes and I don't have a lot of confidence in individual sections or detached teams holding out if the enemy decides to concentrate on one axis. A good opening position might be a kind of Z setup on the right, enfilading the blue diagonal, but the 11th platoon starts off in a deployment zone that is not only really small, but actually split in two. So to begin with, I'm mostly focused on getting one section and the Bren team over to the right to watch that field and set up to enfilade the inside of the diagonal, and get the HQ and other supporting assets into a more central location. I certainly would rather they were further forward, this setup has a lot less depth than I would like, but I don't think having to run up to the forward Bacage lines and then fall back under pressure is going to be pretty. It could be tough whatever happens before 12th platoon turns up. Once they're here, I'm going to be a lot happier and I can send them off to whichever flank needs the support. First things first though, I need to get Brand's gun out. It doesn't seem tremendously useful where it's set up, it has a short line of fire and with it taking 4 minutes to pack up, it seems sensible to push that button in the deployment phase and be ready to start dragging it back to its Lloyd carrier as soon as the game begins. This and rapidly sending a section right seem like good initial moves, 
On the first turn, my troops spot German infantry moving up. Exchanging pot shots for the next few turns, it's soon pretty clear that the main enemy effort at this stage is on the right. Not only are there plenty of infantry contacts, but a light vehicle contact pops up that soon resolves into an armoured car, a PSW-234. I can't deal with this with the six pounder. I've already sent it off the map at this stage, but I'm not sure it's necessary. The 234 is open topped and as it approaches, my infantry start pinging small arms fire off the turret. This not only forces the commander to burn up, but to reconsider the wisdom of getting this close. The 234 reverses back out of the field. This is a welcome respite. That 20mm cannon has tremendous suppressive potential, and I can concentrate on turning the right field into a kill zone. The key to this is the lane running the length of it on my right. I've already diverted a section and 11 platoons pierce over that way, where they are lying in rate for the right moment to come online and finish off the L shape covering the blue diagonal. The platoon Bren and a few riflemen are stationed on that hedgerow. They're not there to hold it. I have another section in reserve if it comes to that. They're there so I can keep tabs on the German advance without exposing too many of my troops to suppressive fire coming from MG42s at the top of the field and on the lane halfway across. The scouts back at the former AT gun position are keeping an eye on that flank, occasionally trading shots with more enemy infantry until one of them catches around and I pull his buddy back down the slope to rejoin his section. I'm not worried about this flank right now. There are no contacts anywhere near to threatening it. That said, while the enemy advance across the field on the right is clearly the biggest threat right now, I'm not particularly feeling any pressure. I'm basically waiting for the Germans to get close enough for my flanking group in the lane to be most effective, and most of my sight is pulled back from the bocage and out of sight and out of danger. I've taken a few casualties here and there from lucky shots, and there are clearly some mortar spotting rounds dropping in, but whenever the Germans take the odd casualty to my screening force, they seem to stop and go to ground in the wheat. The suppressive fire from their support soon kicks in every time, but what should have been a rapid, committed punch across the field is turning into a slow motion crawl. They're still failing to get to phase line blue when my first batch of reinforcements turn up after 11 minutes. This allows me to consolidate my defense of Geryon by feeding the newly arrived 12th platoon onto the left flank and freeing up 11th platoon section over there to go and support the right. It also gives me the backup needed to react if things go wrong, so I'm free to order the flanking party in the lane to open up. They're only about 60 meters away from the straggling German advance, and while I was hoping for them to be able to engage a swarm of infantry with devastating results, they have to make do with picking off individual soldiers strung out in the wheat. There are some enemy crossing the field further up who don't receive as much attention as I would like, but they're also significantly less of a threat up there. Speaking of threats, the 234 makes a reappearance. It cruises up through the wheat in line with what was probably supposed to be the infantry assault and is again immediately plastered with small arms fire that prompts it to back off. It puts a few bursts of 20mm fire into the Geryon hedgerow without causing any casualties and although this causes some suppression, it's not suppressing the flanking party who finally get their chance to shine as the supporting MG teams try and move up and get gunned down for the trouble. Annoyingly, 11 platoon's Piat team in the lane can't see the armoured car, but with a single vehicle thread on the field, I'd already pushed 12 platoon's Piat over towards the right. Moving into position on the hedgerow, they spot the armoured car and blow it away with their first shot. That's two successful Piat engagements in a row. The next mission is probably going to be a complete disaster. Meanwhile, the enemy has started popping up at the top of the left field and engaging 12 platoons line along the bocage at the bottom. This means they've reached phase line blue, which I was always expecting to happen at some point. They have some support from elements in the right field that have made it to the diagonal further up, though I'm able to keep their heads down with enfilading 2 inch mortar and Bren fire from the lane. If possible, I want to be able to do something similar on the left, but the battlefield offers more awkward options. 12 platoons Bren and 2 inch Mordor are set up in a keyhole to cover the Geryon hedgerow as a backstop, but with 14 platoon arriving after 60 minutes, earlier than I was expecting, I have some spare manpower on hand. This allows me to push a section up through Gavras itself to the top of the road. It's risky, due to the bocage walls and lack of entry points on the adjacent buildings, there's no cover on the road and nowhere to run if things go wrong. But the enemy hasn't even screened it, and 3 section 14 platoon is able to push up right to the far end. 
they manage to get into position at exactly the same time that the Germans decide to try and attack down the left field. The result is a massacre, with three sections engaging from a flanking keyhole as they leave the Bacarge at the top of the field, and four more sections aligning the Garyon hedgerow at the bottom, putting their heads up and engaging, the German infantry melts away. After a few minutes of trying to push with heavy casualties, they break and try to flee, only to be gunned down. One minute into overtime, the enemy surrenders. That automatically makes it a total victory for me, but the casualty figures tell the story themselves. I've lost 4 dead and 8 wounded, the Germans have lost 62 dead and 30 wounded, plus the 234 armoured car. They never reached phase lines yellow or red, never came close to reaching, never mind contesting, Objective Geryon, and I was able to pull Brand's AT gun out well before the Germans were in a position to stop me. So overall, a pretty comprehensive success. A lot of that success is owed to effective exploitation of the terrain, using it to get onto the attacker's flanks and to screen my troops from enemy suppressive fire until the right moment. But fundamentally, this was a poorly supported, poorly coordinated infantry only attack, and it should have been relatively easy to repel. In the next mission, the Germans are launching a stronger attack on the Gavras bridgehead, backed up by heavy mortars and tanks. That should present a much greater challenge. It could be that the breather is over and the campaign is going to tighten the screws again. Hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.